have a bit of tidying up to do and uh, to start with it's going to be the Germans not all Germans of course but I have some German subscribers and one or two of them not all I repeat one or two of them have taken me very much to task for criticizing Germany in general I've never done that in every case, I have been aiming my barbs at the German government or the people in, high up in the bureaucracy. So I have to make things clear here. I'm not going to apologise for having a few digs at the German government because I do believe it ended up as part of the problem in Ukraine. And I'll explain why. Uh, and I'll start with some history. In 1933, there was a debate in the Oxford Union here in England, which has become famous to this day. If all you have to do is type into Google king and country and you'll you'll get a reference to it. If you need to know more about it, just do that anyway. The motion for debate was as follows. This House will under no circumstances fight for its king and country, which only goes to prove that even in 1933, Oxford students were rotten at grammar. That should have been in no circumstances, not under. After all, circumstances are around you, aren't they? Anyway, that's beside the point. It wasn't only the grammar that they managed to mangle. The motion was passed with a stonking majority. 275 for and 153 against. As a matter of fact, it wasn't the first either. In 1927, the Cambridge Student Union passed and there was a similar huge majority. And the motion was that the only way to ensure world peace was if Britain disarmed itself and adopted an uncompromising policy of pacifism. Now, at that time in the 1920s and 30s, the only working class people you're likely to find around the hallowed halls of academe uh, would have been the cooks, the cleaners, the porters and the gardeners. So the sort of people who passed these resolutions were the brightest and best that Britain had to offer. They were all of them sophisticated young people in step with the modern world and entirely above the distastefully practical opinions of the lower orders. In fact, they embodied just the type of sneering insolence that we see here. If you know anything about the history of the Second World War, perhaps you can see where I'm going with this. The Cambridge Union, um, that king and country resolution, went round the world. Everybody noticed it. Every tin pot dictator and would-be dictator on the planet after World War II, Winston Churchill, having seen a lot of official papers, said that the resolution had a profound effect on the planning of both Germany and Japan. And after that resolution, they both saw Britain as decadent, weak and soft. In other words, a pushover. Um, an MP called... Um, Robert Bernays said he came to the conclusion that pacifism causes more wars than it prevents when talking about a visit he made to Germany around the mid 30s. And he was speaking to a group of uh, young Nazis who asked him about the British pacifist agenda. And one of them said uh, when he explained it to them, one of them said to him, the fact is you British are soft. And Bernays realised there was going to be trouble ahead from just that. Uh, he, he described the, the look in that young Nazi's face. It wasn't pleasant the way he described it. The German impression of how much trouble they would have if they attacked 
assessing the Cambridge Union resolution, they they didn't get any idea that they were going to get any resistance. And Mussolini uh, himself said that Britain was a frightened, flabby old woman. And that opinion was not changed when Chamberlain started his policy of appeasement towards the end of the 1930s. And, and Chamberlain, he was a weak man in himself, but he did have a lot of the country behind him. Everybody was fed up of the First World War and still suffering from the effects. And he didn't feel like the country was ready for talk of war. Altogether, that resolution and its aftermath was probably responsible for the deaths of millions. Because I think if uh, the man with the moustache and the man without the moustache had seen more resolution on the part of the British, they might have thought twice about starting what turned out to be a, an immensely costly adventure. And by costly, I'm talking about human lives. Uh, anyway, so that resolution, of course, wasn't a direct cause of World War Two, but in a way, it had its effect. It it provided some sort of a framework for aggressive people to think that they were going to have an easy time of it. The joke is, of course, that many of the students who passed that resolution then went on to fight and die in the cause of Britain seven years later. It wasn't entirely serious, but it had its effect because it was taken seriously. Now back to those guys on the German delegation of the UN. Trump stood in front of a general assembly. He was the president of the United States. Whatever you might think of him or his opinions or the colour of his hair or how much of it is natural or anything. He was there to represent the United States. And by the way, that same United States that had spent a fortune policing Europe. We have to remember that. And he deserved at least the minimal respect due to anyone speaking from that podium whoever he was, and those guys were openly laughing at him. Apart from anything else, that was horrendously rude. It was just awful. And if there are any German subscribers still watching this, uh, don't you realise how rude that Well, I'm sure you realise how rude that was. It was also, of course, wrong and short-sighted. And um, well, he was short-sighted by, by any standards, any customer of anybody. I mean, you know, even somebody who sells milk. Uh, any customer knows that if they can go to one shop only to get one specific item or product, that shop will end up being very casual about customer service if it knows you can't go anywhere else. And um, so what it was, was appeasement. The German delegation were in their way doing what Chamberlain did. It's just the sort of thing the British were doing in the 1930s. Shutting their eyes, putting their fingers in their ears and pretending that Russia wasn't a shark. But if it was, it would eat the other little countries first. So... That's why I've spent about three videos in one way or another criticising Germany. Of course, I'm talking about the German government, but it did have the backup of the German people. And of course, Germany isn't responsible for Putin's imperial ambitions. But I do believe that in their reaction to Trump's warning, Germany is indeed partially responsible for Putin's belief when he embarked on this dreadful venture that the West was soft and he could get away with his aggression. I mean, he must have thought that or he wouldn't have done it in that way. Uh, it turns out, just like it was with Britain, that the West was not as soft 
as all that after all, that they could put their differences aside and, and unite to push back. That in the end, Germany started acting responsibly and seriously. And because of this, it might be that Putin will not get his heart's desire after all. But in the meantime, there are people who died who might not have died if Putin hadn't seen those grinning faces in the UN which might have confirmed his opinion of the naivete of Western Europeans, which at the time, remember, were more or less led by Germany. And that, together with the obvious senility of Biden and the fact that Ukraine, after a history of complete uh, political corruption, now had a comedian and a scriptwriter in control, that would have been enough to make Putin think that he was headed for a walk in the park. I've talked about and criticised the American government many times. The Germans looking in on this, if you still are, who are so annoyed, well, I have to tell you, this is my opinion. I am not an expert in war studies. I read a lot and I can grasp a lot and I can analyse a lot. But in the end, I have just what I can see in front of me. I don't have any special access to um, secret information. So I form this opinion out of what I've been able to see. And I watch, by the way, for other people, I, I watch all sorts of of different channels, including George Galloway's channel, which is extremely pro-Russian. I am looking at these things as well. And this is what I've come up with. And that's my opinion. And unless I get a whole lot of evidence to the contrary, that's the opinion I'm sticking to. And if you don't like it, well, you know, you don't like it. As you can see from the numbers on my channel, I don't pander to people's prejudices. I just say it how it is and I lose subscribers when they get annoyed with me. Well, that's the way the cookie crumbles, as they say. So, I am Granny Opterix. I am on uh, YouTube, Rumble, Bitshoot and Minds. I let you know when I've uploaded a new video on Gab, a uh, Twitter Gab and Parlor as at Granny Opterix. Please like this video if you do, share it if you wish, support my channel if you can and, uh, and make sure your subscription is still live if that's what you're into. OK, till next time. Why not treat yourself or a favoured relative or friend to these magnificent examples of merch? The mugs and t-shirts come in the Granny Opterix design or Grembo with a firearm or the more deadly knitting needles. Go to www.grannyopteryx.com and whatever platform you're watching this on, please click like, subscribe and share, share, share.